of the Cross and RRS Ernest Shackleton. Rolls-Royce worked closely with the scientific community to create its unique design. She's designed to break ice. She's also designed to have a large oceanic range of around 19,000 miles. And also, at 11 knot speed, she has to be virtually silent for the research that she actually does. The vessel is a 128 metre length, 24 metres beam, full load displacement of around 15,000 tonnes. So it's a, a fairly sizeable ship. Construction began at Camel Laird in Birkenhead in 2016, with hundreds of people working on the project. So it was prefabricated blocks and then they come together when we were in the construction hall. The top half was separate to the bottom half and then once we launched down the slipway we then stuck the top half on basically. The ice strengthened 10,000 tonne hull was launched by her namesake Sir David Attenborough in July 2018. Our future and everybody's future will be affected by what people working on this ship, British scientists and others, will be discovering in years to come. The Royal Research Ship Sir David Attenborough will be operated by the British Antarctic Survey and carry up to 60 scientists from pole to pole. The uppermost housing is the conning tower, which gives us much better horizontal visibility when we're in the ice. The next one down is the observation deck. It's a great idea because it means that the people that we're carrying to Antarctica, they've got their own deck that has as good a view as we have on the bridge. Specialist facilities on board include a giant piston corer, moon pool, helideck, autonomous instruments and robotic technologies. So what we've got is a vessel that can take lots of people, can deploy instruments from various different points in different ways, can go into the ice, can take the moon pool that enables us to put equipment into the water even when we've got ice all surrounding the vessel. This ship represents an opportunity to go to places that we've never been able to go to before, places that are too extreme for our current capabilities. The very deepest parts of the ocean, the iciest parts of Antarctica, the most remote places is that most ships couldn't get to and work in with the amount of fuel they carry. This really is a new way of working. So the David Attenborough as a new polar vessel for the UK really represents a massive investment, but also a massive commitment to doing science in the polar regions. And that's really important because they're some of the fastest changing areas on Earth. We also need to understand the role of the polar regions and how it controls the climates and oceanography of the whole world. So having a ship that can go and get through some of the most difficult conditions in the world is really important in terms of doing good science that can help humanity. Because of its size, it has the opportunity to bring in scientists from all around the world um, and form international collaborations that work on multidisciplinary sciences. We have a moon pool where, when we are in the deep ice, can deploy equipment through that hole that goes through the whole hull of the vessel. And we can take samples in a way we haven't taken them before. Essentially you could study everything from microbes to whales. My colleagues who are geologists are going to use deep water coring devices. That's a big tube that goes down to the bottom of the sea and will sink into the mud and collect a sample of that mud in order. And those different layers are like the rings of a tree and they tell you different things about the oceanography and the climate at the time the mud was laid down at the bottom of the sea. Also, it gives scientists the ability to get to remote regions who might be working on land. One of the good things about the Sir David Attenborough is going to be the amount of autonomous vehicles we can use. So there's going to be ocean gliders, which go down to a depth of a thousand meters. Things that the glider measures is typically temperature and salinity of the water. It has interchangeable labs, so containerized labs that can plug into the ship. We have aquarium containers where we can keep animals alive from the deep sea for a long time and see what they do, how they act. Somewhere between 10 and 20% of the animals we collect on our expeditions are new to science, and that's just from places we know about. So the potential to go and look in the deep sea where everything we find might be new to science, for me that's really important that we understand what we have now before it's too late.
So I'm with my next guest who's going to tell us who she is and what her role is in this project. Well, Alan, I'm Linda. I'm Linda Kappa from British Antarctic Survey and I lead the public engagement and media programme for the RRS Sir David Attenborough. So you've been very busy this week? I've been very busy this week, but it's been fantastic. I've been involved in this project for the last five years. Uh, I stood in Camel Laird when it was great big chunks of metal waiting to be cut and I'm standing in a whole ship. It's really tremendous. So how does it feel now it's all come together and we're actually standing on the ship in the Thames? Quite emotional for me. When I watched a ship coming into the Thames last night, the sun was shining, the windows were glinting, and I could feel a lump in my throat and really emotional that here we are, this thing we've been working towards for such a long time. And you know, it represents a huge effort from hundreds of people, thousands of people actually, from the shipyard to the designers, to the project managers, to the engineers, all of our mariners, all of the people in Cambridge, working really hard to make this ship work. And in a few weeks time, it will be making its first trip to Antarctica. I mean, how exciting is that? Very exciting indeed. And why is the SDA so important to oceanography and scientific research in general? Antarctica is really important for the whole world. It might be far away, but it really matters to everybody. It affects our daily lives. The ice, if you like, reflects the sunlight back, keeps the, the planet cool. The cold water moves the ocean circulation around to cool the planet as well. Um, there are lots of things that are unknown about Antarctica. It's still got some secrets to yield, but it's the place we discovered the hole in the ozone layer, and everybody sat up and take, took notice. Uh, international agreements put a ban on chlorofarbons. Um, really, very important place. There are animals that can live for hundreds of years. It's just a, such an exciting place to live. And what's next for you, and indeed, Bass? Well, this is the start of a new chapter in Bass. This ship. big scientific missions to Antarctica. We have an international collaboration with America looking at the impact of the ice uh, and melting ice uh, in a place called Swaites Glacier which is contributing to sea level rise and we really have to monitor that because if the ice is being lost and our sea levels rise that's going to affect coastal communities all over the world. So it's a really big project, people on the ice, taking measurements in the air, taking measurements in the ocean, and pooling all that knowledge together to see what our future is going to be like. Amazing job, I can see everybody's having a wonderful time on board today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Alex. This is a really exciting moment for us all. You know, this ship, the Sir David Attenborough, I've, I've seen it evolve from a pile of steel on the, on the floor of the shipyard into now, into this amazing state-of-the-art science ship that's going to allow us to do science that we've never done before. I mean, along with its massively important science impact, this ship is a, is a massive boost for us to fly the flag for UK PLC across the world. It's a huge boost for Merseyside and the northwest of England in general. It's not just the four or five hundred people directly employed in the yard. The offshoots into the supply chain all around the port will be massive. The actual project value will disseminate into the local area in a large way. And, and you know, the other thing is that the skills that it will develop will allow us to use this as a platform for a much, hopefully, brighter export future of similar specialist ship around the world. To be able to get this opportunity to come work on this ship, but then also Camel Aids overall. Personally, this has been a massive opportunity for myself. This ship can go and change history and to research new stuff and find new stuff and everything about it should change some sort of history for the world. We're incredibly excited and proud to take this ship to the ends of the earth to try and predict our future. It is the greatest possible honour that this marvellous ship should carry my name and I wish good luck, good fortune to everyone who will sail and work with her. Thank you very much.
It's no news to any of you that the world at the moment is facing great, great problems. And the most aware of that are the young people of today who will inherit this world. Great problems require great research and facts in order to solve them. That's what this astonishing ship will be here to do, to find out the facts, to find the science with which to deal with the problems that are facing the world today and will increasingly do so tomorrow. Our future and everybody's future will be affected by what people working on this ship, British scientists and others, will be discovering in years to come. And I thank everyone who has been involved in this wonderful enterprise and wish them huge success when this marvelous ship gets down there in the Antarctic, which we thought was so remote, but which we realize now is absolutely crucial to the future of all of us. Welcome aboard. The ship can carry up to 90 people. Each person has their own comfortable cabin located away from the bow to reduce the effects of motion. The ship is a floating city and has everything you could need to live and work at sea. From state-of-the-art labs to a TV room, fitness center and even a sauna. Meals on board are buffet style and include a mix of cuisines. Scientists and researchers study a range of subjects such as chemical oceanography and marine geology. Some even study zooplankton ecology. The ship can be at sea for 60 days, so crew must be prepared if anything goes wrong. There is a small hospital staffed with a trained doctor, as well as electrical engineers to keep the ship running smoothly. It's great living on a ship. Um, they're kind of like small little villages, really. Um, they've got everything you need to survive. They've got water purification, there's a canteen, the science labs, there's the computer rooms, there's the bridge, which you can go up and look out to see. Everything's heated, so that's all the outside decks. All the handrails are all heated as well to stop them freezing. You've got a sauna, you've got a nice coffee lounge, and it really is about the social interactions and it really is shipmates. There is that feeling of living and working together. So you need to find your way to work with everybody and appreciate everybody because you rely on each other. Some of the hardest things are being away from family and friends as we can be away for up to two and a half, three months at a time. Communications is incredible. When I first came, you, you wrote a letter. Now you just pick up the phone. The job itself can be taxing. Maybe we've had a lot of rough weather, so not a lot of sleep and people are a bit groggy. For me, the biggest challenge is uh, sleeping, especially in rough weather. <laughs> Ice breaking uh, is noisy, it can throw you out of bed. We do come complete with our own doctor's surgery and the ship always carries a doctor whilst in polar regions. You have your places where you can calm down after a hard day of work. Most important is, of course, your own cabin. On the new Sir David Attenborough, we will have cabins for two or a single person, and all of them will have windows to the outside, which will make a huge difference to be able to look out. I might turn around and see nothing one day, but the next day I'll see a dolphin or a sunfish or, or just something that, you know, actually is a pretty unique view. I was left outside and a minke whale came up right next to the ship to have a little rest and a breathe because we'd made a hole in the ice. I was screaming and shouting, is there anybody else to see this? And there wasn't. It just feels like something that is a real privilege. A 
started at Camelard as an apprentice plater, came here to finish my apprenticeship. When I first started work, I did feel like I was out of my depth because I never worked with structural shift drawings or anything like that. The support of supervisors and management, they've guided us in the right direction. Working on the Sir David Attenborough ship has made me realise that I'm happy with the career choice I've made. It's also given me the drive and inspiration to continue chasing my career and progress through the ranks. I think it's important that the ship is built locally in Britain because it's been used by the British Antarctic Survey. It's also good for the economy, it's provided a lot of jobs. My PhD is using gliders to look at mixing in the West Antarctic. Warm, salty water at depth gets mixed upwards 